Namaste everybody, welcome to Yoga Candy. My name's Candice and today I have a really beautiful stretchy flow which is perfect for the mornings. It's an all levels class, it's not the perfect beginner's class, but if you're a beginner, feel free to join, have a couple of yoga blocks handy that will help you in some of the poses. And it's gonna be pretty much a full body stretch, but we're gonna be really focusing on hip opening today. Um, just to release any tension, any emotional baggage that we might be holding on to. So I hope this flow leaves you feeling a little lighter and a lot better within your body. So do let me know how you guys get on at the end of the class. All right, let's begin. Okay, so starting off in a comfortable cross-legged seat or any seat of your choice. Sit up tall through the spine. Keep integrity between the lift in the head and the tailbone touching the ground. Taking the tops of the palms to the knees. Breathe naturally. And then start to deepen the breath in and out of the nostrils. Keeping it this way throughout the class. Extend through the right hand, take the fingertips to the floor, lock the elbow and drop the head to the left. Maybe using your right hand just to Create some extra resistance. Breathe deep, shoulders away from the ears. Slowly lift the hand in line with the elbow, with the shoulder, sorry. Keeping the fingertips facing the sky and lock the elbow. Feeling that stretch all the way through the palm, all the way to the tips of the fingers. Make some circles, big circles or small circles, whatever feels good. And you may notice that this just opens up and stretches different parts of the shoulder and through the neck. And then release that hand, bring your head back to the center. Just roll the head over towards the right side and extend through the left arm. Fingertips on the ground, lock the elbow. Shoulders away from the ears and maybe taking this hand to the top of the head, creating that extra bit of tension to help get deeper into that stretch. Now lift the hand, bring it in line with the shoulder, fingertips facing the sky, lock the elbow. Just feel through the stretch. The amount of time we spend on phones or on laptops causes all sorts of pain and tension through the arms all the way through the elbows and into the hands. So you may feel the stretch all in all of those places. And then start to find those circles, big circles or small circles. Totally up to you. Feel through the body. Listen to your own body and what feels good. <sighs> Releasing that hand slowly. Roll the head a couple of times from shoulder to shoulder. Making our way onto all fours, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Taking three cat cows. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. Exhale, arch the spine, tuck the chin, the tailbone, and hug the belly button back. Two more, inhale, drop the belly. 
exhale arch inhale drop the belly and arch coming into our puppy pose extend the arms bring the forehead to the floor melt your heart down towards the ground Hug your belly button back and try to keep your tailbone or your hips in line with your knees and your heels in line with your knees as well. If you're a little more intermediate, you may want to bring your heart down to the ground and rest your chin on your mat. Rolling your head and your spine all the way forwards into Sphinx Pose. So we're coming down to the belly. Our elbows are in line with our shoulders. Our hands are in line with our elbows. Look forwards and just close your eyes. Pressing the tops of the feet into the ground. Taking some deep breaths. Come all the way down to the chest, extend through the, the left arm and bring your forehead, your head down to the ground, look to the right. Rotate your body so that you're trying to get your chest to look at the sky. We're opening up through the shoulder here on the left side. So bring that right foot over the left leg that is extended and bend the knee just to hold you in place. Using your right hand as a little tripod stand to hold you in position. Stretching through the front of the chest and through the front of the shoulder on the left side. You may want to move around, just play around with the arm, maybe move it higher, maybe Move it lower, but be very gentle with your movements and mindful that you don't pull anything. Release, roll yourself back to your tummy, extend through the right arm, bringing it down in line with the shoulder and start to rotate the body over towards the right, using your left hand as a tripod taking that left foot over the right and using that as a tripod behind you or you can keep it in front of you or even balancing on top of your right leg. Slowly roll to the stomach. Keep the arms wider than your mat and inhale, lifting with your spine. Lift your head up just as high as you can get it and your chest and exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Take two more. Bend your legs, take a grip of the inside edges of your feet, keep your knees in line with your hips or just slightly more open. And we're gonna kick up into our hands into a bow pose. Kick up as high as you can, lifting your chest and lifting your thighs and knees off the ground. And exhale down, plant the hands on the ground Push yourself up into a plank, nice and strong. 
feet together, hands shoulder distance. Maybe find a little rocking motion. You could take easy plank if you want to, just taking your knees to the ground. But if you want to be on your feet, find a rocking motion back and forth, stretching through the calves by keeping your legs completely straight and aiming to push those heels down towards the ground. And then send it up and back to your downward facing dog. Feet hip distance, hand shoulder distance, or just a little wider. Look between the legs. Have a slight tuck of your chin, just so that you keep your neck nice and long. If you need to, you can bend your knees as much as you want to. And never worry if your heels are not touching the ground. Some people never manage to get their heels to the floor. But maybe with time and practice, maybe they'll touch the ground. But that's not important. The important thing is how you feel in this very moment. Breathing through the sensations. Staying present. Look between the hands, lift the right leg and step it as far forward as you can, preferably between your hands. Keep your hands on the ground if that's possible, or you can take them to your knee, to your front knee. And we're like in, in a low, in a runner's lunge, in a runner's lunge now. So start to just rock again, pressing that back heel down towards the ground as you rock backwards. You'll feel that stretch down the hamstring, but really through the calf. Now walk that right foot to the outside edge of the right hand. So we're in a lizard pose now. If you're more beginner, I recommend grabbing some blocks or something that you can place your hands onto. You may not be able to place your hands on the ground at this point of your practice. Just sink low with the hips, so starting to stretch through the psoas muscle here on the left side and opening up through the right hip. Taking one more deep breath here. And step back into plank and then downward facing dog. You can take a child's pose and just rest. Or take three, de three deep breaths in your down dog with me. If you're in child's, meet us in down dog. Rolling the spine forwards into a plank. Rolling onto the side foot. We're coming in for side plank. Hug your belly button back. And if you're more beginner, place the top foot into a tripod in front of you. Lifting this left hand up to the sky. If you're a little more experienced, you can place that left foot on top of the right. Pressing into this right palm. And from here, if you can, lift this left leg and step it forwards. If that's not possible, just make your way any way you can into this runner's lunge on the left side. Remember, you can always bring your hands to your knee or use your blocks to place your hands onto. Take your time getting into the pose. And then find some rocking, rocking back and forth, 
pressing that back heel down towards the ground. And then if you can, place the hands on the ground, opening up through the knee, so walking that left leg, the left foot to the outside edge of the left hand. Maybe you want to rock, maybe you just stay still and allow the hips to hang heavy, drawing them closer and closer to the ground, just stretching through the right psoas, the right hip, opening up through this left hip. From here, step back to plank and downward facing dog. All together, let's take a little child's pose here. Take your knees nice and wide, send your bum down towards your heels, extend through the arms, place your forehead on the ground. Breathe here, coming back into the body, becoming aware of tension anywhere, letting go. If your bum is lifted, it's okay. Just accept where your practice is today. And then come on forward, sending your tailbone to the sky for your downward facing dog. Taking three deep breaths here. This will become a, a resting pose. The more and more you practice yoga, this will be a place you come for rest. If you're just, um, if you're fairly new to yoga, this will just feel like, are you crazy? But don't worry, with time it will, it will feel like a lovely resting place. Now roll forward into your plank. And from here, in your plank, Tilt over towards the left side for side plank on the opposite side this time. Remember if you're a little newer to yoga, pop that right leg in front of you as a tripod stand. If you can, you can stack the feet, creating an extra challenge. This time, let's roll forwards into plank and send it straight back to downward facing dog. Look forwards and jump step or walk in between the hands. Halfway lift, take a big inhale. Exhale, fold, hug your legs. Bend your knees as much as you need to here. Grabbing onto each elbow, hang heavy in a rag doll. Maybe you want to walk your knees, just bending and straightening through the legs. Inhale, half lift, look forward, fold once again. <sighs> Scraping the fingertips along the ground, sit back as if you're about to sit down onto a chair. Coming in for our chair pose. Hands lifted, shoulder distance, or take them to your heart in prayer. Try to tuck your tailbone. Sit lower and lift your toes off the ground. Just make sure you can see your toes. If you can't, you need to sit back a little more. And inhale, hands to the sky. Look up as they touch. Straightening the legs in our mountain pose. Exhale the hands down towards the side body. We're going to take tree pose together. Lift up through the left leg and place 
the left ankle on the inside edge of the thigh above the knee or you can place it on the ground so it's just balancing or just below the knee so wherever feels most comfortable pushing that knee open consciously hugging the belly button back and looking at something that isn't moving we're going to hold this for five deep breaths so get into your position hands at heart center and pray or you can lift them to the sky and place your palms together squeeze your glutes and breathe keeping the shoulders away from the ears Placing the hands to the side body, slowly release that foot, but keep it lifted up towards your chest. Hug your belly button back. And then take a giant step behind you into a high lunge. Inhale your hands to the sky, hips are facing forwards, bending into that right knee. So the right knee is about a 90 degree angle to the mat. And then opening the hips nice and wide into a warrior two. Extend through the arms, look beyond the right fingertips. Back foot is a 90 degree angle to the back of the mat. Bend a little deeper if you can. Swivel the hips forward, come up off the back heel into a high lunge once again, hands to the sky. And then plant the hands down on the ground into our runner's lunge once again. You can stay here in runner's lunge, just feeling through that psoas muscle opening once again. Or maybe take it further if you're a little more intermediate and straighten the front leg into pyramid pose. Shoulders away from the ears, hips are facing forwards. If you're in pyramid, maybe rest your head down towards your shin or your knee. But try to keep your spine nice and long. If you're in your pyramid pose, bend through the knee back into runner's lunge. Plant your hands in front of that foot and we're going to come into our pigeon pose. So this front foot, we're going to lift it off the mat and we're going to take the knee behind the right hand and the foot behind the left hand. And we're going to swivel the back foot a little further back, hips face forwards. This, this top leg is bent so you want to either have it at a 90 degree angle to the top of the mat, that's very advanced, that means your hips are very open. But the closer the heel is towards your left hip, the easier this hip opener will be. So wherever you are, just breathe, stay up nice and tall, just sink to the ground, give in to gravity and allow this hip to open up for you feeling that stretch through the psoas muscle here on the right, on the left side. Maybe play around with some waves of the spine, bringing your head to the ground and then coming back up to a seat. Whatever feels good, just play around with this pose just for a moment. And then plant your hands once again. Come up off the back heel, lift your bum into the sky and step back into your plank. We're going to take a chaturanga together. 
you can drop the knees and take an easier plank. But otherwise, bend the elbows, keep them close to the body, draw your chest to the floor. Inhale, lift the chest to cobra or upward facing dog. And then send your tailbone to the sky, meeting me in downward facing dog. I'm going to take three deep breaths in our downward facing dog, or you can take a child's pose and enjoy your breaths there. Meet us in down dog if you're in child's. Take one deep breath. Look between your palms. Jump, step or walk to the center of your hands. Inhale, half lift. Look forwards. Exhale, fold. Tucking the chin ever so slightly. Taking a grip of each elbow in your rag doll. Bend your knees as much as you need to. <sighs> Maybe finding a little yes. Rocking back and forth. Maybe rocking from side to side. Maybe just being still and feeling through that stretch. Okay, halfway lift, inhale, hands to shins, exhale, fold. And scrape your fingertips along the ground, coming back into our chair pose. Tuck your tailbone, lift the toes off the ground, hands above the head or in your heart center in prayer. Make sure you can see your big toes. If you can't, you need to lean back a little. Inhale, straighten the legs, arms above the head, watch as the hands touch. Exhale them to the hearts, back down to the ground, sorry. And then to your heart center. Let's do our tree pose on the other side. So we're gonna lift up through the right foot, taking that heel and bringing it in towards as high up into the leg as you would like above the knee, otherwise place it below the knee on the calf, or you can have it just resting on your heel with your toes on the ground, if you need that extra support. Hug your belly button back, hands in prayer at your heart center or up in the sky. Holding this for five deep breaths together. Really actively try to push that knee open using your glute, squeezing your glutes. One more deep breath here. Slowly lift that leg. If you can, squeeze the knee towards your chest, keeping it lifted. Hand to your heart center. We're gonna take a huge step back behind us into a high lunge. Hips face forwards, sinking low, bending into this front leg around a 90 degree angle to the mat. Inhale the hands to the sky. And open the hips, nice and wide. Back heel comes down to the mat, opening the foot to a 90 degree angle to the back of the mat. Warrior two, open up through your hands, looking beyond these left fingertips. Bend a little deeper into that front knee if you can. 
and then lift up through the back heel, sinking low into the front, in for our high lunge once again. <sighs> Exhale, frame the front foot in a runner's lunge. You can stay in a runner's lunge and just feel it out, rocking back and forth. If you're a little more flexible, you can always straighten the front leg, hips must face forwards, in for our pyramid pose. If you're in pyramid pose, remember you can always rest your head down towards the leg, giving into the stretch. Bend back through the front leg. Take your hands to, hands to frame the foot. Lift up through the foot and we're coming into our pigeon pose on the other side. So place that right knee behind the, sorry, left knee behind the left hand and the foot behind the right hand. The closer the heel is towards the, the right hip, the easier the stretch will be. It won't be so intense. But the more of a 90 degree angle you've got your shin to the front of the mat, the more intense the stretch will be. So just be where you are. I mean, I've been practicing for many, many years and I can't get my foot or my, my um, shin to be a 90 degree angle to the mat. It just doesn't seem to happen for me. So it may, may never happen for you and that's okay too. Just remember, yoga is not a competition. It's all about just enjoying that moment with the breath, with the body. So feel it out and enjoy it. You can stay just sitting up tall or maybe find some waves exhaling down over the front leg. Inhaling up. Plant your hands, shoulder distance, tuck the back toes, lift up through the leg, and then lift this, this open knee into a plank. Holding your plank nice and strong. Remember, you can always take the easy variation with the knees down. We're all gonna exhale nice and slowly into a chaturanga. Exhale, elbows close to the body, come all the way down. Inhale, full baby cobra or a full cobra. Exhale, down. <sighs> Sending our tailbone all the way back. Bring your knees together. Open your feet out wide, wider than your hips and sit back between the heels. This may not be accessible to everybody, but if you're more beginner, you can always try propping your, your tailbone onto a pillow or onto a block. That may make this accessible to you. Just make sure that your heels are close to the thighs and they're on the outside edges of your thighs. This is called hero pose, so it's a kind of an opposite to the hip openers we've been doing. An, an internal rotation of the hips more than an external rotation. So just sit here nice and tall through the spine. You can close your eyes and just breathe here. There's no need to do anything else. You can just stay here or you can just go into a child's pose. Feel free to enjoy a child's pose if this pose is just not happening for your body. If you want to take it a step further, we can find cow face arms or gomokasana arms. You take your right hand up and over your head, bending it and taking the palm between the shoulders. 
maybe using the left to push that down a little. So you can use the left to push the elbow back. You can just stay here or take full Gomukhasana with the left hand coming back behind your body and potentially finding a grip of the right fingertips behind your spine. Sitting up tall, wherever you are, whatever pose you're in, and just close your eyes together. Let's take five deep breaths here. Slowly release the hands. If they're in Gomukhasana, release the left hand in front of you first and then the right. And we're going to come forwards into a plank, taking our plank pose again. And let's take a chaturanga down all the way down to the belly once again. Inhale, baby cobra or a full cobra. Exhale down. Sending our tailbone back onto our heels this time. So just a kneeling position. Tuck the toes so it's like yoga for the toes. So we're kind of on the toes. This may get a bit painful if you're not used to this. So you can always change position. Um, you can take any seated position. We're going to just sit up tall once again. We're going to do the same thing with the arms. So it's up to you. You can leave your arms just resting in your, in your lap. Or we can take Gomukhasana arms. This time the left hand up and over the head, maybe taking a grip of the elbow, pushing it back a little with our right hand. Or taking our full Gomukhasana with our left, oh, sorry, our right hand coming back behind the body and taking a grip of those left fingertips. Wherever you are, find your comfort. And let's take our five deep breaths together. Now let's very slowly, if you're in Gomukhasana arms, release the right hand first and then the left. Stay where you are and just find some neck rolls. If you're in the kneeling position with your toes tucked, just untuck the toes and sit back onto the heels and wherever you are, maybe join us in the seated position or stay in a, in a cross-legged position is fine. I'm going to take some side body stretches. So reaching over towards the left side of the room, planting our left hand on the floor, maybe taking that right hand behind your head, tilt your chest towards the sky and breathe in the side body stretch. Sending it over to the other side. Left hand behind the head this time. Tilt the chest to the sky. And back to center. Let's extend our legs and just Bang our, our thighs and our calves against the floor. 
point and flex the toes, maybe find some circles with the feet in one direction. And then in the other, especially if you've been kneeling, this may feel really good. Then bring your heels together and exhale, fold, bending your knees as much as you need to, just finding a little forward fold here. Now slowly, let's roll our spine back into a seated position. <sighs> and finding a cross-legged position, any, any seated position of your choice, or you can lie down in Shavasana. We're just going to end with a mindful meditation. There's going to be some silence together now. Try not to skip this part and just enjoy the breath. Bringing the breath back to a natural rhythm, closing the eyes, taking the top of the hands to the knees, palms face the sky. Allow the shoulders to hang heavy. Stay with the moment. If your mind wanders and you think about what's going to happen later or what you should be doing now, then just come back to the breath and to the body. We're just going to be here for 30 seconds or so of complete silence together. Okay, you can stay here as long as you like. Just keep breathing naturally and enjoying your meditation. Or you can end your class with me by wiggling your fingertips and your toes. And then rotating the wrists in one direction. And then in the other. Taking your hands to your heart center in prayer. Bow your head. Namaste, everybody. You can open your eyes. I really hope you've enjoyed today's class. And if you did, please don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and leave me a comment just to let me know how this class made you feel. It is an all levels class, so if you're very beginner, I would rather you searched for beginner yoga with yoga candy um, but of course if you were a beginner and you joined us today I hope you coped all right do let me know how you got on and until next time guys do remember you can leave me requests if you have any ideas of anything you would like me to film I love your ideas I always jot them down and try and incorporate them uh, you can find me on social media as well you can find me on Facebook Instagram and you can sign up for my newsletter on yogacandy.com I'm not as present on those platforms as I have been, but I've got a two-year-old, full-time mummy to my two-year-old, so it's quite tough to, you know, I try not to be on my phone in front of him, but I will always make sure I post every now and then, and it's just lovely to see you on there. Just don't forget to tag me if you share any pictures of you doing my classes, which I always love to see. So, yes, until next time, everybody, have a beautiful day. Namaste. Namaste.